the set of issues in Latin America regarding uh, copyright can be framed within the same set of discussions that are happening worldwide. Essentially, all Latin American countries are regulated by uh, having signed the uh, Berne Convention, which is the most extensive copyright treaty that somehow harmonized uh, copyright systems worldwide. This treaty dates to 1886, and it is also part of a set of treaties signed um, together with agreements on um, intellectual property as applied to commerce uh, within the framework of the WTO um, signed in the mid-1990s. So uh, Latin America is part of the copyright discussion and it finds itself in a very similar situation as many countries in the world. That is uh, a place where the tension between author's rights and copyright holder's rights are somehow um, in tension with uh, the right to access and participation in culture. And within this context, Latin America has a, a set of specific problems. The Latin American system in general is um, highly influenced by uh, the European uh, regulation, that is the French copyright tradition. So uh, what we find uh, specifically within the framework of what we could call copyright maximalists in Latin America is a uh, tendency to uh, consider uh, copyright as uh, something that can be assimilated within human rights. And in a sense, the um, Universal Declaration of Human Rights of 1948, as well as the International Covenant on Economic, Social, and Cultural Rights um, in 1966 could um, support this notion that copyright is a human right because uh, within their uh, provisions they uh, acknowledge the rights of authors and inventors over their works. But in both treaties, um, it is clear that uh, author's rights is closely related to um, and it shares provisions in the case of the International Covenant on uh, Economic, Social, and Cultural Rights. Uh, this is Article 15, which shares author's rights with uh, the right to access and to, uh, to participate in culture. So these treaties have uh, the same rank as the Constitution in Argentina, um, and they have been signed by the majority of Latin American countries. So we find that there is a tension which uh, human, uh, which uh, these treaties have addressed somehow, but the tension still exists, and it is a subject to debate from students, from uh, academics and teachers, um, th those who study this from the perspective of law. Now, from the perspective of activists, that is, those of us who work in, in uh, copyright activism, there are various options to address this issue. Um, different um, uh, alternatives for different types of situations. For example, in Latin America, we find some of the world's most restrictive laws with respect to access to knowledge, as is documented um, every year by Consumers International, which is an organization that does comparative law and, uh, and now analyzes uh, uh, different legislations with respect to how copyright legislations facilitate or hinder access to knowledge. And in recent years, the legislation in uh, Brazil and Argentina, as well as Chile, have appeared within the ranking of the most restrictive legislations. This has uh, changed in Chile uh, after 2010 with the modification of their intellectual property law. They incorporated some clauses that made access more flexible uh, through exceptions for librarians and uh, other types of um, exceptions and limitations to copyright, which um, took Chile out of the ranking of those countries with the worst legislations. However, Argentina and Chile and Brazil rather remain within this ranking because they still require significant modifications. Um, Argentina and Brazil are two uh, um, among the 20 countries in the world who don't yet, for example, have exceptions and limitations that favor the work of librarians, which uh, sets uh, excessive restrictions to access to knowledge for uh, the society uh, in these countries. So working from um, the standpoint of uh, addressing uh, the modification of laws is one of uh, the strategies that copyright activists uh, use. So bring bills to our legislatures calling for exceptions to these rights. For example, exceptions for education. And this is a, a, a central pillar of much of our work. Exceptions for libraries also have to do with 
uh, particularly the work of um, the librarian uh, professional associations who are advocating uh, legalization of their daily work because in laws like those in Argentina, very restrictive, a, a, a librarian that does um, interlibrary loans or backups or copies for academics and study and so on are um, committing copyright infringement. There are also discussions on some exceptions and limitations for people with reading disabilities. For, and in this respect, Latin America plays a central role in the uh, framework of the international, or the, rather the World Intellectual Property Organization, where for the past few years, the idea of uh, signing a treaty to favor uh, the uh, sight impaired is a central um, uh, 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 calling of the civil society organizations. However, there are other strategies for those of us who work in this field. Another strategy is the use and dissemination of uh, free licenses. Oftentimes we hear uh, those of us who work uh, within the Creative Commons framework, for example, that these licenses may not be valid or uh, questions on uh, about free licensing in our countries. So to those of you who wonder how valid these licenses are, uh, it is worth noting that the use of licenses such as the Creative Commons license or the free software licenses which are also mm, uh, enforceable in our countries has to do with uh, exercising your um, uh, author's rights or your copyright. For example, exercising uh, Article 2 of the Argentinian Intellectual Property Law which says that an author can um, make whatever use of their work as they see fit. So uh, by attributing uh, this right to the authors to make use of their work, then you you know licensing it uh, under an open license is one of these attributions. So these are two of the main channels that activists are using in this region. So on the one hand, disseminating and promoting the use of uh, free licenses. Uh, however, this is a limited strategy. It is a strategy that is useful uh, for us as authors to disseminate uh, among those authors who wish to um, become part of the free culture movement by licensing their work under a Creative Commons license. However, there are some necessary conditions to be able to publish and distribute uh, work under Creative Commons. First of all, you must be the author of the work. Um, so we need living authors um, who, you know, those authors, we need those authors who are living and who decide to use these licenses. However, what happens when we have works from uh, authors who are deceased or uh, from authors who may not uh, be aware of uh, how to make use of these types of licenses but wish to make their work available or uh, with those works that are um, held by, say, record companies or uh, large um, uh, publishing houses and uh, other types of companies that hold the copyright uh, but that uh, do not wish to enable uh, open or free distribution. In these cases, what we need is to, um, to engage in a debate on making intellectual property law more flexible. And in this regard, in addition to asking or looking for limitations and exceptions, which are uh, covered under the Berne Convention that don't enter into conflict with signed international treaties, we also need to place this discussion within the framework of the global discussion of how do we wish copyright to look like in the digital age. We can look at a historical timeline and say that the copyright system that is in effect in Latin America dates back to the 19th century. It was consolidated in the 20th century with the rise of cultural industries and entertainment industries and which has reached a, a point of collapse in the 21st century uh, due to massive uh, digitalization technologies. And it is within this technological context and within this legal context that we need to uh, think how are we going to create a new uh, copyright uh, legislation that can respect the three aspects that are clearly stipulated as rights in the International Covenant on Cultural Rights, that is access, the right of access to culture, the right of, of participation in culture, which is much more than mere access, and also authors' rights um, within this framework. So there are chances or possibilities of allowing authors to exercise their rights without making these uh, monopolies uh, that last a lifetime or 70 years after their death. There are countless possibilities, but what we need to do is to open a broad debate among all interested parties. And interested parties are, well, artists, authors, uh, clearly all those who hold 
uh, any type of copyright, but also the academic world, librarians, civil society, and, and any individual who has a right to have access to and, and to enjoy culture. 